morning and welcome to Village in Motion. I'm Clint Lambert this Monday, June 15, 2015. Uh, and this morning, we have two of our board of directors with us to talk about Vision 2015. We have Jackson Bain, who's been on the board of directors for eight years. And we have Betty Price, who's been on the board for three years? About three, four years. Three or four years. And we're just so pleased to have both of you with us this morning. Delighted to be here. Glad to be here. And you're going to talk to us about Vision 2015. Right. I know about you know having 2020 vision. What's 2015 vision? A little further out. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> we're for those of you who who uh, don't know who we are. We're the board of directors, and our job at, at Green Spring and at other communities in the Mid Atlantic is we're the governance folks. We're the people who look over the entire operation, uh, who are the sponsors, if you will, of the not for profit that this organization uh, is, represents. Uh, and uh, uh, Ericsson, for example, is the management organization that does the day-to-day -day management of the institution that we're the Board of Governors for. So we, um, we have a lot of responsibilities, but one of the big responsibilities is looking out far enough, mm -hmm. Clint, to see into the future so that plans we make today right. are the right plans to meet the future. Now, Ericsson already does this five or ten years out. Right, and that's the, the management company does a five or ten year plan. Exactly so. Okay. But we, we're looking beyond that because the plans we make today for major uh, budget items, mm -hmm. uh, for uh, operational changes okay. of how we would meet a, a different conditions in the future, all of that has to be decided uh, or at least thought about today. So our job with the vision committee, the reason it was created in the first mm -hmm. place, is to look out 15 years and to the best of our ability, figure out what are the likely conditions under which Green Spring will operate in 2030, ah, in 2040, okay. and right. beyond. So that's really hard to do. It's like yep. predicting the weather. And, and that's, that has to do with the fact of our repositioning. I mean, that was, that well, was a vision, right? To, we, uh, we, it actually started a little bit before repositioning. Okay. Uh, Reverend Carol Yingling, who many of you may remember, uh, was uh, one of the uh, board members here in the Mid-Atlantic mm -hmm. right. uh, region. Uh, Carol Yingling started uh, 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 us all doing something called the 2026 Plus Committee, huh. and uh, and Carol uh, uh, that led to the Vision Committee, mm -hmm. uh, it sort of uh, translated into the Vision Committee. Then uh, Carol was with us for the first year, but then passed away right. unfortunately in our first year. But uh, he was just a, a great guy. But he had he knew that we had to look out that far. Yes and look further if we're going to make adequate plans and if our boards are going to be thinking through the future mm -hmm. as they made their day-to-day -day decisions. Right. Mm -hmm. And so you guys are doing that and how are you going about doing that? Well, a lot of research. Betty, we, we, we certainly looked at a lot of papers, mm -hmm. didn't we? A lot of databases, a lot of people, yep. a lot of magazine articles and, and futuristic journal articles. Right. And, and, we, and we didn't stop there. We started, we, you went to a lot of uh, meetings and mm -hmm. conferences mm -hmm. where mm -hmm. the future further out was yep. being discussed. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. We started with, a uh, there was an economics report from, uh, predicting 2030 conditions economically. And looking at the demographics and those kinds of things? Uh, absolutely, demographics. Uh, we'll, we can sort of take these if you want to. We can show you the yeah. folks a little bit if about you would. what. Would that be okay? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Why don't we go to the first slide real quick, and then we can take a look at uh, uh, what the vision committee. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Well, uh, the idea was that we wanted to be an independent research resource uh, for national senior campuses. Now, just to remind you, national senior campuses is the sponsoring organization of all of the not for profits uh, that Ericsson uh, Living man Management works for. So the National Senior Campuses is the governing board, governing group, uh, but uh, the organization is the sponsoring organization that creates the not-for-profit. Okay. All right, so what we wanted to do was an independent, of Ericsson, mm -hmm. um, study of what the future was going to be, right. be, be like beyond where they are, where okay. they were predicting. Uh, we also wanted to look at, uh, you know, what the conditions are 15 to 25 years. Uh, we wanted to look in four areas of inquiry that we thought were the, going to have the greatest impact on this community and all the others. Okay. So those areas of inquiry, if I can see the next slide. There we go. Okay, so, well, there's the why. Uh, we, <laughs> we, uh, we make decisions by, go ahead and keep the next slide up, if you will. We can talk a little bit about that. Uh, we, uh, we, we have to make those decisions now, or at least think, start thinking about them now, uh, to be ready for uh, uh, the next uh, next 15 to 20 years. 
Uh, we also have to look at scenarios for mm -hmm. our communities. Those demographic changes you mentioned a minute ago, right. Cliff, those are examples of the kinds of things we, we we're going to be looking at. Um, and then use that data that we collect uh, to make the decisions at the board level at our board meetings. Right. So if we go to the next slide real quick. Those are the four areas of inquiry that we, we started with. Economic and political changes, healthcare and wellness changes, diversity and demographic changes, and technology changes. Betty? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, covering, uh, we're going to be looking at each, uh, each one of those areas very briefly. Um, the economic, political, in fact, when you think about why people move to Erickson communities, what they're looking at uh, today, mm -hmm. and then thinking about for their grandchildren right. in the future. All these four areas are going to be so very critical to the millennials, mm -hmm. the, the younger, and things are going to change so dramatically yes. by then. So uh, economic, political, healthcare, and wellness, t saying a little bit more about how mm -hmm. critical that is a foundational right. issue. Diversity and demographics, we'll be talking about how that is changing, uh, and it's going to change the whole environment. Mm -hmm. in which, which we live, and the technology is huge, it covers everything. Um, so, looking at the first one for economics. Right, it, well, let me tell you one thing. First of all, everything that we found about the four areas, yes. they all interact. Ah. The economic and political mm -hmm. uh, changes are going to affect- uh, uh, How healthcare know. is delivered. Exactly so, the, the diversity and demographic changes yeah. are going uh, to affect how the political yes. and then the economic decisions right. or policies are, are set. Yes. Uh, so everything interacts, we have to, have to make sure that you know, our communities, which sit at the intersection yes. of all of those issues, mm -hmm. uh, are properly prepared for those big changes. Yeah. And they, they just flashed up the, the slide about the interactions. Yes, yeah, exactly. All fit together. Uh, yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, so, an economic political, let me just go through some of these things. The, yes. the fact is, things are changing out there. If you have grandchildren, uh, this is the thing that Betty said a minute ago, it's not just the technology is changing. Uh, in grandchildren these days, and, and millennials and Gen Xers, uh, we have people, you know, young people who are not buying homes. Yes. Who are not in pension programs. Yes. And so they do not have the equity in their Correct. homes, and they have not lived in a home for 40 years or 30 exactly. years. Correct. Uh, to build up an equity. So how are we going to meet that 15 yes. years from now? Right. You know, or 20 years from now, or 30 years from now? Right. Uh, so we have to be prepared for all of these things, and it's really, we have to do some serious thinking, and frankly, yes. we need to be a little bit creative. And that's some things that are happening now uh, in some of our sister communities it where is. they're coming up with creative financing and, and looking at how they can get residents in that do not have the nest egg right. uh, from their homes. Exactly. And other changes out there, the, the fact that the, uh, the competitors, mm -hmm. uh, the uh, naturally occurring, occurring retirement communities, yes. the village concepts, the um, affinity concepts, mm -hmm. the university and collegiate uh, communities that are growing up because of the affinity with the mm -hmm. university or collegiate. Okay. I mean, those are competitive uh, uh, concepts, even in the urban concept yes. of a CCRC, where it would be downtown mm -hmm. in some in, right. in cities. And, and is Green Spring experiencing any of that now, uh, in regards to it? Yeah, uh, but not really. I mean, we're, we're seeing the beginnings of. Betty, why don't you talk about it? Because you had a conversation about this just last week. I think. Well, there, yes, certainly the residents now mm -hmm. at, at uh, all of our. Uh, communities are raising some of these issues okay. and affordability is becoming a huge issue uh, from an economic standpoint of uh, can we continue to market to the middle class mm. which is a foundational principle for us right. uh, or are, are we going to move out uh, of that area where we just no longer become affordable mm. um, and then as the political changes uh, are just increasing so tremendously that, that put the context of all this in, uh, in a very different light. Okay. Uh, we've we've got to keep looking well into the future, what the trends are. And yes, you're right, the trends are certainly beginning right now. Yeah. Okay. You know, the, the thing that we're seeing most uh, impressively uh, is in is in health and wellness, mm. and maybe if we should show them that that slide with the uh, mm -hmm. with the mm -hmm. without the is aging mm. of of the elder population is yeah. going to be changing over the next 20 yeah. years. Mm -hmm. So if you'll go to that next slide, that looks like sort of an upside down mushroom. Uh, there it is. There we go. So that's fascinating to me, because people are getting older yes. and staying uh, healthy and active longer. longer. Yeah. Um, and it's all about the health and wellness. Yeah, because the seventies are the new thirties. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> They'll keep telling me that. <laughs> <laughs> Glad to hear it. Yeah. Huh? yeah. Suddenly the olders are getting I don't younger. Know, I feel thirty. I yeah, don't right. know. Exactly. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. 
Should, yeah. In the health and wellness? Yeah. Going, okay, yeah. yeah. This, this is near and dear to my heart and mm -hmm. certainly a central issue right now. When you think about the reason a lot of people move into our communities yes. today, health and wellness is a, a foundational right. issue. So we really have to stay on top of the trends of where this is headed. And what that is going to mean economically and politically mm -hmm. as we move into the future. Um, we're finding people are living, of course, a lot longer, right. as that previous chart was showing. So we will have a much older population, potentially, yes. and probably, yes. in our communities. And it's interesting that the age group of 85 plus mm -hmm. could leap, literally, from 5.8 million in 2010 to 8.7 in 2030. Wow. 5.8 to 8.7, but then, by 2050, 19 million. That's going from 5.8 today to 19. That's a huge pressure yeah. on the whole healthcare industry right. and on what our our residents are going to be facing when when they uh, in, by that time. Yeah. And it's both the independent and assisted living side. Mm -hmm. It's uh, but the whole point about wellness and why we in our communities have got to stay on top of the latest. Um, technology, mm -hmm. the latest philosophies, the latest knowledge right. about health. Healthy strategies uh, leads to healthier residents. Mm -hmm. So if you have wellness mm -hmm. programs in place, and that's going to mean lower costs okay. for everybody, which is going to be huge. So in other words, if we can stay healthy, we don't have it, to receive treatments. Exactly. Uh, so even concern. though you may be 100, you will hopefully be healthier mm -hmm. and more well, especially mm -hmm. in a wonderful community like we have, that mm -hmm. we need to foster that kind of thing, you will be far healthier then mm -hmm. than even a 80-year-old is right now. Yeah. That's that's the goal that we're headed for okay. in, the, in the health and wellness. We were running, we're running into a shortage of healthcare workers, yes. however, that's another reason we need to stay healthy. Right. And geriatric specialists that's are gonna be harder and harder issue. to find. Yes. Yeah. Um, and the key, I think, for the next generation is expectations in terms of tailoring medicine, tailoring procedures, tailoring fitness programs mm -hmm. to the individual. No longer one size fits all by any stretch. And all the research that's being done right now, the genetic testing, the DNA, the, all this sort mm -hmm. of thing, we are moving into that kind of medicine and that kind of approach where we in the future had better focus on tailoring what we do to each and every resident. That's and, and that's huge. Uh, the impetus for the board saying we need to build a, a larger swimming pool fitness center, sure. correct? Right. Exactly. I mean, that's what led exactly. to all of that. Exactly. That, that, this is a great example of, yes. of this planning ahead part. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we have to start thinking now about, mm -hmm. about that, and that includes the healthcare care center. Mm -hmm. yes. You know, how will that change? And every, all the research in the world shows that those kind of facilities definitely, guaranteed, lead to better feeling, better wellness, better quality of life, mm -hmm. and that's what we're all about. And so not only are we looking at the future with that, we're looking at the present, too, of helping exactly. the people who are here. Exactly. Yes, exactly. Because that's one of the, the biggest concerns that people who <coughs> currently live here have. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, you're doing all this stuff for the, the future. Mm -hmm. You're doing this for the baby boomers. You're doing this for well, the millennials. A, yeah, we're not. We're, what we're really doing mm -hmm. is protecting the investment of everybody in this community okay. right now. Mm -hmm. All right. Because we have to, if we're going to be an attractive option mm -hmm. for those in the future, and I mean even that far out, yeah we need to start protecting the investment of the people who live here today. Mm -hmm. And that's what the Vision Committee was built to do anyway. Mm -hmm. Okay. The community must remain desirable for the future so that the people living here today mm -hmm. will be able to sell yeah. and move on. In so their, so in the residence. monies that they have invested, that's right. all of us we'll have be, put, right. put exactly. up, is our entry exactly. deposits. Exactly. That our, our heirs right. will get back exactly. the appropriate amount. Right. Exactly. Okay. And so there's that gap of time, uh, the gap of time being how long it takes to plan, how long it takes to execute, how yes. long it, it takes to deliver. Mm -hmm. uh, and we just can't, we can't afford to have that gap widen. Right. We really can't. So mm -hmm. that's why we're doing what we're doing. Right. Okay. Right. All right. So then the other key interesting uh, aspect of all this is some um, diversity. Okay. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Um, things are changing so much in our cultural environment. Mm. And it's not just races or people from different countries right. or background or nationalities, but the whole social infrastructure mm. of, our, right. of our, our, where we live and, is, and is changing. And with diversity, I mean, when you think about education, the diversity right. of, of education, right. the different degrees that people uh, have. Yes, right. exactly. I mean, you know, 
and different interest levels that people have in exactly. things. Exactly. Sure. What people are, again, going to be comfortable with mm -hmm. in their living environment is right. going to change as, as time moves on. So we have really got to stay on top of, of that we don't create racial islands yeah. so that people can really understand and, and interact with each other. But you know, you, you mentioned islands. I've, I've got to jump in here with something really good. Isn't the movement though for people to have smaller eating areas so that they can interact better? Uh, sure. That, that, that's something that we're looking at. It's been right. looked at of how to rearrange dining areas? Yeah, sure, I think that that's, that's exactly what I mean. We want human interaction. Mm -hmm. okay. we, we, need, we, st we thrive on human interaction, all of us do. Mm -hmm. uh, and so yes, that, that is part of, part of the idea. Okay. But what Betty's talking about really is the larger external changes that are going on in, in America. Huh. Okay. Uh, and those big changes for, and, and it is racial, it is, it is across the demographic uh, you know, racial lines, but those changes are gonna be huge. Uh, there's a chart that, uh, a slide that's the uh, next one, it's the bar, bar graph slide. Mm -hmm. uh, that uh, you, you can, that maybe yeah, you can right. see some go. of it's that. Hard. Yeah. So, but if you take a look at the, uh, the top line up there, that's the total population changes. And uh, the uh, white population uh, is the uh, part in the uh, blue, the dark blue up there on the left. The longer lines. Longer lines. Yeah. Longer lines, yeah. Uh, but see how that changes. Drop down to the age 65 plus down at the bottom, the two bars at the bottom, and you see how that has changed considerably uh, in, in there. And so we have, uh, we're going to see some big changes mm -hmm, there. Mm -hmm. Difference between 2012 it's, and 2016. So what does, that, what does that mean? It mm -hmm. means it may be political policy changes. Mm -hmm. It may be uh, economic uh, changes. Uh, all of which are uh, we have to sort of think through right now, prepare for. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yep. that's it. Okay. Yep. Yep. Yeah. All right. And and with this, how do you go about preparing that? <laughs> what do you do? I think uh, right now we're just urging our boards to think about it. Okay. If you're going to make a decision on repositioning, if you're going to right. make a decision on a giant budget item, think: Is this thing going to have an impact 15 years from now? Mm. And in 15 years, what will that impact be? And how do we need to tweak this, mm -hmm. change this? To, to better prepare ourselves to meet what the uh, predictions are going to be. And one of the key aspects, as we're planning now, is flexibility. Oh, right, So exactly. that what we are constructing or planning or strategizing on now has got to be adaptable and flexible because we can't read the future. Right. Right? We, the tea leaves yeah, the are tea very leaves murky, are just, you know, very murky. Yeah. So we've got to be able to, when we see the trend moving differently yes. than what we had anticipated, to be able to modify and adjust to whatever that requires. Okay. Our third area of inquiry really depends on that flexibility, mm. and that is technology. Betty uh, was talking about the, uh, what was the question you, as you were talking about, what the, what the people think about their grandchildren? Oh, yes. <laughs> well, the question, I would ask you, how many of you have grandchildren? And probably I can see all kinds of hands coming up. Um, how many of those grandchildren have cell phones, everybody's hands right. going up, and then how many of you understand how to use a cell phone as well as your grandkids do? Uh, and I don't think anybody's around. hands are going up. So the, the whole issue is technology is causing a huge generational yes. gap. Yes. Right. And that's only one example of the, the, the huge changes yes. and the gaps that we have got to begin to understand. And uh, technology is uh, just exploding right. and uh, cell phones is just yeah. one example. But, but, but Das, das yeah. Pond is part of it. Yeah. Yeah. And that's das what I was just going to yeah. say because when we put the Das Pond in people were saying why do we need this, why do we need this. Mm -hmm. That Christmas it's amazing how many people got iPads uh, from, oh, from sure. their grandkids sure. that's yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's or got right. cell phones, uh, yeah. iPhones type situation mm -hmm. and now people are using them, people are talking about them, people right. you see in the dining room with them or, or you know walking down the hallways with them. Absolutely. So there is a increase just here in the last couple of years mm -hmm. about the use of technology. And that's inevitable. I mean, it just is. The, the convenience and the, and the utility and the, mm -hmm. and the ease and, and stuff that you're not even thinking about right now. Uh, things that uh, we're thinking about uh, are, include things like smart cards uh, instead of the, when you, ch you check in at the restaurant. Right. Uh, you, you know, have that available to you and it, you basically could just walk through. It's an RF, uh, right. RFI, RFD. Yeah, know. RFD, yeah. No, and that's rural free delivery. <laughs> sorry, I'm going back. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm back way back, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> but, you know, that's something that has been talked about is the fact of having the electronic ability for our not latches, that we do, they won't have to flip them right. up, that right. they right. automatically would 
would be there and they would automatically come down when you open the door. Exactly so. Situation. Yeah, that, and all of that. Yeah. So uh, th those are the things that Das Pond was doing and right. because there was some thinking done ahead of that. Now we have, a, we have pipes, if you will, mm -hmm. like digital pipes in, in our community here that are big enough for a lot of things, uh, including uh, health care and wellness, uh, uh, you know, uh, technology mm -hmm. help and things right. like that. Uh, uh, the people in the future, and you can show the next slides if you want to, uh, the pictures of the uh, robots and the exoskeletons. Yeah. I mean, these are, don't, don't be surprised when you see more of these little guys rolling around. Exactly, the hallway. exactly. Not anytime soon, but, but you know, at some point. It's certainly, hospitals are using hospitals them. Hospitals are yeah. using yeah. these I right now. This is mm -hmm. a robot that's actually working right now in hospitals. Mm -hmm. And they're be uh, used, being used in Japan on a regular basis. Yes, yes, yes they yes. are, yeah. Yes. And uh, so it's really, a, and those are exoskeletons. Uh, for a mobility device, uh, what they're they're able to do now mm -hmm. is literally help people walk. Yes. Uh, by having an exoskeleton that literally uh, helps them move their limbs. Right. Because uh, people they just absolutely could not. With, we're not mobile whatsoever because exactly. of back injuries. Uh, you know. Exactly. Situation. And now these, can move around. And these are being developed. You know, the technology exploded. Mm -hmm. That's the wrong term. The technology really came into 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 mm -hmm. use right. after uh, the Iraq and Gulf Wars. Yes. Uh, because all of our veterans who were coming home uh, with par paralysis right. uh, were, were, they needed something to help them. Mm -hmm. And the exoskeletons were developed uh, by some really smart yes. scientists out there and engineers. Uh, and now they're being used to help our veterans. And yeah. it has really uh, it made it now possible yes. for the rest of us to see how that might be used for and our family members. Yes. One critical part about the, this kind of technology is enabling our veterans, but as we age, Aging in place is yes. becoming a huge, huge right. issue. Um, a lot of the data shows that like 90, 95% of your millennials younger would want to age in place, and even yeah. the boomers are wanting to do that. So this kind of technology is going to help that. Mm -hmm. uh, but the, the, the issue that it does not help is the social part yes. of wellness right. and a lot of the things that only a community mm -hmm. like an Erickson community right. uh, can offer. That's so, so that's true. a trend of yeah. the future that we really have to look at is this aging in place versus what we have to offer and why we consider what we have to be far superior. Well, and that's one of the nice things about Greenspring that we have the 2,000 residents, we have the 1,000 right. mm -hmm. plus employees. Mm -hmm. right. People are interacting all day. I mean, for, before I moved here, we lived in a, in a 55 plus condo complex mm -hmm. that had 16 buildings. And I see more people here in one day than I saw there in a month, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, in regards yeah. to as far as the interactions. And so right. it's just, right. you know, this is very, very nice. But as facilities get smaller, you're going to have less social contact. Sure. Um, anyway, it gets down to the village concept where people are living in their homes. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not ag I'm not against it. I'm you know if they can manage that and, and, and feel good about it. But but I will say that Betty talks often about the various uh, parts of wellness. Yes. Uh, and I, can you give me that list? What, give us that well, list. Well, <laughs> <laughs> um, emotional, physical. Um, of course, the the physical would be the medical, um, intellectual, um, environmental. Um, oh, God, there's spiritual, like, spiritual of course, yeah, right. very, and social, did I say the social, social yeah, and yeah. occupational right. is the other. Yeah. So, um, and Erickson communities are developing a grid mm -hmm. uh, based on International Council of Active Aging has a wonderful grid on wellness, how they're, they're uh, matching each of the things that are going on at the communities with those seven dimensions of wellness. So Erickson does that very well. Yeah. Uh, but we have to stay on top of that and be sure that that they are all being met. And the social issue, of course, comes into play with, with so many things. Uh, you can get your social, emotional, uh, physical all bound up into one kind of an activity. And uh, that's where you have a real win-win kind of a situation. And all the data in the world shows that's the way to live more healthfully and happily mm -hmm. and live longer. Yeah. It, it, the data is very clear on that. Very good. Well, what I'm hearing is you guys are on top of this. Uh, you, which we were. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm glad we, it sounds that way. Let me, let me put it this way. Okay. You, you, everybody has seen on the Weather Channel and, uh, and uh, on your new satellite system. Okay. Right. Yeah. <laughs> everybody has seen on the Weather Channel the, the, uh, the teardrop-shaped prediction mm. uh, that the weather the hurricane uh, predictors use. Right. Uh, and, and as it goes out uh, 12 hours, 24 hours, 48, 72 hours, that teardrop gets much wider because the probabilities are so much uh, mm -hmm. are so so much larger. Yes. So, 
with the vision committee, what we've been doing, the further we look out, the wider the probabilities. So we, we really have to uh, look at, this, at the resources that we're using. Are they reliable, credible resources? Mm -hmm. Uh, is, are these impacts that will have the greatest impact on our community? Okay. Uh, and number three, the most important thing is, is it often cited by others? Mm. Uh, you know, just the same way the Google algorithm, right. you know, exactly. chooses what, what pops up on your uh, search page. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're using those kinds of, that, those kinds of uh, criteria, triage, for those of you who've been in yeah. med medicine, uh, to, to determine which are the most likely predictions, mm. and those are the ones we use for the 2014 report yeah. and the ones we're using for the 2015 mm -hmm. studies. Okay. And we're getting out and talking to a lot of people in, mm -hmm. living in Erickson communities, right. yes. to see where they are concerned about mm -hmm. the trends and, and where they see them leading as well. We're, yes. uh, we're by the way, going to Leading Age in November oh, yeah. in Boston, uh, and we've been uh, 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 approved for uh, presenting a workshop there Wonderful. on creating vision committees oh, okay. and why you and your community should consider creating a vision committee to look out further than your okay. usual five or ten year plan. For those people that don't know what leading age is, would you sure. share some It's the largest organization in, I guess, maybe the world. The world. I think it, right. yeah, it, it is the world. Um, for uh, continu continuing care retirement communities, retirement, com retirement communities in general, uh, and uh, anybody aging. that does anything with older adults, that's really. right. Everything. It's, it's everything. It's building, yeah. planning, street. I mean, because it used to be called medical. American Association of Housing and Services for ah. the Aging. Yes, it ah. did. My, my my daughter worked <laughs> for them for a period of time that's as right. their convention ah. person, ah. Uh, and it really it covers the the waterfront uh, right. in regards to aging. Uh, it really does, yeah. and so there'll be quite a few thousand people in Boston in November. We'll do our presentation on uh, why Vision Committee pays off. Mm -hmm. uh, for your current residents, okay. as well as your future residents. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Um, with this, though, you, as a board, mm -hmm. review what's going on. You report to the board what you found when you we go do. to. We do. We also report to to you and the resident council mm -hmm. uh, because we want we want your your team to know uh, you know what what the report has said. Yeah. Uh, we report to uh, uh, Erickson, of course, is in, uh, you know is with us. Uh, and we even have on our on our committee, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it was uh, an Erickson uh, staffer, right. uh, who uh, is corporate level staffer, corporate level staffer mm -hmm. who actually participates with us, Nancy uh, Baker, mm -hmm. uh, who is the vice president for uh, market mm -hmm. development, okay. mm -hmm. and she's terrific. She's okay. a great and valuable mm -hmm. member of our board of our committee. Well, I would like to encourage you to consider, and for the board to consider, to put another resident on the board and have the bre have that resident work with the vision committee mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. as well mm -hmm. in regards to that. Uh, because I think we can't get enough resident input. That's right. <laughs> That's right. I mean, for all, everything, we really need that absolutely. resident input. I agree. Absolutely. Yeah, in agree. regards to it. Well, this has been absolutely very, very educational and most enjoyable. I'm glad. Uh, Thank you. We enjoyed it. Any other words you'd like to leave us with? We're starting to run out of time here. Well, the future, the future is already here. It's just not evenly distributed. And that's a quote from the author, William Gibson. So. <laughs> yes, and to remember, the future is living outside of Erickson mm. right now. Right it's now. a community right, right now. Yeah. And yeah. so we want to reach that future okay. and see what they're what they're needing. Okay. Well, it sounds like we've got good leadership. You're watching out for things. You're, you're doing your fiduciary responsibilities uh, and taking care of everything. And uh, good. for everybody to remember that the board is the umbrella under right. which the, <clears throat> the management company works for the board. Yes, that's uh, correct. And taking care of the, our needs uh, in regards to it. And you get your input from the resident council. Uh, and from management as well in regards to right. what's going on. Exactly. That's right. Excellent. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Very good. Again, thank you both for coming. We look forward to seeing you guys. Our pleasure. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thanks, Glenn. Thanks. Don't run